Today we're going to be taking a look at the Dimco Hydraulic Brake Line Kit for single torsion axle trailers. This is going to work out for drum or disc brakes. Part number is DM5424. Now when installing your brake line kit, you'll want to of course begin at your actuator. This is a surge style coupler. You may also have an electric over hydraulic type actuator. Wherever your outlet is from your actuator, of course you'll want to remove any caps. Those are typically capped off to prevent any fluid from coming out if they do have it in it. We want our double flare here to go all the way up and sit flush in. Then we've got our ferro little come down. Now on the back side of our coupler you'll see we've removed that protective shroud. It just has two 12 millimeter bolts. Just gives us better access to our connection point here. We've threaded in our steel brake line. Now if you already had hydraulic brakes this is already going to exist. If not you'll of course want to run your new lines get, to get those back to your braking system. This uses a 9 16 and it's a good idea to hold that as you tighten this just to prevent this from rotating. Now you won't need to over tighten it. Once we test it, if we have a leak, we can tighten it up just a little bit more. If it's still leaking, we'll tighten it up just a little bit more, but we don't want to over tighten it initially. Now we're making a pretty long run here. So we're going to use not only the clamps provided with the kit to hold these on, but also some that we have here in the shop. This is part number A0250. We're going to use number 12 self-tapping screw to secure these along our way. Now as we run along here, you want to kind of conform the brake line to your trailer. That way we can keep everything nice and safe. I'm going to tuck in here, and as we go back we'll drop underneath those cross members. You can bend this line by hand, that's how we got it straightened out. But you can also pick up a pretty cheap tubing bender here. This can help out a lot for those a little more difficult bends to make. So that's available, basically it'll just fit over and that'll give you a good curvature here so you don't have to worry about pinching your brake line as you go. And as we go along, of course, we'll use plenty of the loom clamps just to keep it secure. And you see here where we have our cross members on our trailer? I'm just gonna drop down and around. I think this is gonna be more protected than it's sitting on top where it may potentially be stepped on or maybe as you're loading or unloading a boat in this case, maybe the boat would make contact. Now we're ready to get our T-block installed. This is going to go on the frame rail of the trailer. It allows us to connect our main line in. Then we can send a line out to each side. Now this needs to be in a pretty specific location depending on your application. Basically you'll have your short hard line and then you've got your rubber flex hose. Now this rubber flex hose is going to connect to your caliper. So Clearly, we can't have this T so far away that this won't reach. So, just kind of mocked up how we're going to do it. We want this end in our T, this end to go up on our frame rail here, and then we need to make sure we got enough room for our flexible line to come down and meet our caliper without it being stretched and it's still having plenty of room to move up and down. So, as you can see, that looks like a pretty good spot. Looks like we're going to get everything where we need it. There's a tab that sticks off of the back of the T-block there. We're going to use a self-tapping screw here to secure it, but we want a hole here. That's what I've got marked on my frame rail. I'm going to drill my hole, the tab goes in, then our self-tapping screw will go in and that'll prevent this from ever turning. Now we can get our block put in place and get it secured with our self-tapping screw. Nice and secure. Now you're going to have a little bit of bare metal there on that hole, so it's a good idea just to hit that with a little bit of spray paint. And you see the brake line that we have coming in from the front? It's just a little bit long. Now you've got a couple options. You can create a coil. You want your coil to start at the top though and work its way down. Then you'd make a bend to go in the block. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this back just a little bit. Just cut it and we're going to use our double flare tool to create the same end just back a little bit further so we don't have excess. Now we'll attach to the block just like we did to our coupler. Watch the angle as you do. You want to make sure that you get it threaded in there properly. We don't want this to be cross threaded. And we'll be back to our 3 8 wrench and get that tightened down. 
And we'll get our line that goes over to the driver's side installed here. Same process, and again, no need to over tighten. Now, next we can position our tab. Now, this is designed to fit through just like that. And we can take our U clip, and that's going to slide on and secure it. So, we want to ensure that we mount it in the location so we can get our line started into it. Looks like that'll be right there for this edge. So, we'll use a self tapping screw and get that secured. Things see, we want to thread our rubber line into our caliper. Again, we're not going to over tighten. We can always tighten it up a little bit more later. Now for this, you'll want to use a 5 8 which is going to be the same on the other end here. We'll get to that in a minute. We're going to slide that in, place our clip on. Once that's clipped in, we just want to add our hard line into it. Be sure we get it started straight. We don't want any cross threading. We just use our 3 8 tighten down our hard line. Once it gets snug, it's going to want to rotate this. Then you'll use your 5 8 to just hold that in place. This is going to allow plenty of flexibility up and down as our suspension works. Now we're just going to repeat that same process for our passenger side. You'll see as we run here, we're not going to be going across the axle. This axle is going to move up and down. It'll cause your brake lines to fail. We're going to use this cross member here to get everything secured. All right, now we've got our system bled out, but it's very important to check for leaks. We clearly don't want to be losing brake fluid, which is going to lose brake pressure. So what we'll do is check each of our fittings, where they come together. You want to check where your hard line meets your soft line or your rubber flex line. You want to check on the back side of your caliper, where the flex line goes into it, but you also definitely want to check on the back side of that actuator. If you see any leaks at any connection point, try tighten them down just a little bit more and a little bit more until you alleviate it. If you still have a leak after that, you'll just have to redo that double flare. And that'll complete our look at the Demco Hydraulic Brake Line Kit, part number DM5424.